Hi again, everybody, moms and dads, boys and girls. You're in the Chatter Zone. This is episode number... 148. And Imaged is here. <laughs> did you, yes. you you unpack that? I did. Iconographer Magdalene... Master iconographer Magdalene. and professor Magdalene Grace Dean. It's a mouthful. Yes, so we'll we get, better pray. We'll get to that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most, most gracious, gracious Virgin Mary, Mary that never, never was it known that anyone who fled, fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're brought to you by Hot Works on Holiday Drive. That's right. They're open 24-7. If you have the urge to exercise at 2 a.m., good for you. Yes. I cannot identify with yes. that at all. Yes. Leave a note on the refrigerator as you walk out. Yeah, they're open 24-7. Someone could it. do that Yeah, if I'm they bad. wanted to. Doing that. Hot Works, they are our sponsor. What else going around town? Anything? Well, coming up the first Saturday, they come around every month mm-hmm. on the first Saturday. <laughs> and the next one, November uh, 2nd, yes. we're going to be praying the rosary over at St. Mary's Church in East Dubuque. Yeah. So I hope everybody Or maybe us. the chapel day. You remember what happened last year? Remind me. We were headed to the church and there was a funeral. That's right. And we ended up in the... Uh, in the adoration chapel. Beautiful chapel. chapel. Yeah. Standing, or packed in there. Standing room only. Yeah, I remember that. No, yeah. I say it. So anyway, and then of course we're um, grateful for the conference we just had with Father Branken as a speaker. What an event. Yeah, how about that? Father That's Anthony great. Branken. We've got a great recording. We're going to replay that. Um, that's up to you, your program director. We've got to come up with six or eight slots. We'll find them. All right. We'll fill them in. And then, of course, we're also looking ahead to the next conference, which is in March, and that would be with uh, Father Lawrence Carney coming t- from Kansas. Do to I remember talk. right? Thursday, March 13th mm-hmm. at the Best Western again. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's going to talk about the Holy Face devotion. So if people didn't know about Americanism before Father Brinkin spoke, now they do. But if they don't know about the Holy Face devotion, they're going to know about it when These, these two items seem to go hand in glove, don't they? Americanism mm-hmm. and the, her- I should say, the heresy of of Americanism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and the uh, devotion to the Holy Face, which is uh, to counteract revolutionary men. Mm-hmm. Seems to be a connection there. Connect the dots. There. So anyway, so that's what we've got on the calendar coming up. But more importantly, we have one of our favorite guests in today. Well, you were just here a few weeks ago, Magdalene. Hi, greetings. Thank you so much for having me so close to my last talk. Um, I just am thrilled to and honored to and privileged to be here and to teach more people about iconography and to go to the next level of breaking down some of these icons so that people can use them in their prayer life Mm -hmm. and also be graced by them. Are they starting to catch on? You had a, another nice display the other night at the Best Western. Yes, uh, there more and more. I have to say thank you to all of the listeners out there who are supporting uh, Catholicon Art and the Aya Theodora School of Byzantine Iconography by making your icon purchase. And, you know, those icons come from uh, Rome or they, and they come from the Ukraine. And I bring them in ex- exclusively for um, Aquinas Communications mm-hmm. and Bellowing Ox mm. because, um, it, you know, I want to be able to bring in icons that are affordable because the pieces that are made in the gallery are usually commissions that are much more complicated. They're usually available uh, for the churches and they're larger and maybe to some people inaccessible in terms of uh, cost. And these icons that we bring in are... Um, affordable, they're small, they're portable, and so many more people are realizing that the icon is a, 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 a good thing to help them in their prayer life and to add to their prayer corner at home. And not just in the prayer corner, but in every room throughout the house. And this mm-hmm. is something that so many people... Um, so go deeper on that. Are, are people becoming attracted and seeking out icons from a 
prayer life, a theological life, not just I want to put something pretty in my home? Exactly. So they're, because they're written in a language that is very much uh, text-based, even, even the images of the holy ones, they are um, comprised of geometric shapes that are laid on top of each other. It ends up looking like a molded uh, 2D human form. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and this is very different from the devotional pieces uh, of religious art where they're painted with oil painting and they're, they're painted um, not necessarily in layers, but just to look very much realistic, which are lovely. Those are beautiful and they are works of art. But the icons are actually liturgical devices. We like to use the term device because they um, act as a form of communication or a bridge of communication to God. They mm-hmm. help bring you closer to God, but at the same time, they communicate towards you and they move God's light. They also move um, um, photons and, and, and uh, electrons. When we're using semi-precious stones that are ground up, and they are bound with egg yolk, which is the 2,000-year-old original formula that icons were used when, when Christ was walking the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and the 24-karat gold, which is used at the halo, sometimes on the backgrounds of the icons and also in, in uh, little areas that are ornamented on the vestment or, or on the wings of angels, um, they, they actually create a a palpable warmth so one of the things that i'm doing now is when people come in to take a closer look at the icons at the studio i bring them up into the clerical room the clerical room is the place where clergy come and anybody else who wants to commission an icon that is written in that 2000 year old um, uh, formula and they are more expensive um, not only uh, in the materials that are used, but they're also um, very, very long going in terms of production. So between the fasting and the pure life that the iconographer has to live and the prayerful life, um, the icon endeavors to be a very clear, pure channel. And we're going to talk about purity and symbolism in icons, especially uh, with the angels and in, as we progress in the show here. And it's a, just a lot uh, uh, more um, what we would call God's design within the icon that's created by the iconographer, but mm-hmm. we're following the canon of the church. We are not making up our own uh, design. Gotcha. And that's making the transition to the owner, the viewer? the, the Yes, it's palpable. It's actually, I, I have so many people who come in and, We have a little testing section where I have a printed uh, icon or another form of devotional art. People touch that. And then I have them touch the icon that has the gold and the egg yolk and the Mm -hmm. semi-precious stones. And they say that it is is an obvious, almost tingling on their hand. And then without being able to break down what it is that that's happening within them, many of them have an experience and they drop to their knees in front of an icon. Fascinating. Mm. Wow. And so we can look at beauty at face value on the surface, and that moves us. But there's something about iconography, and of course this is the original form of, of art to depict our faith. Um, there's something about iconography that goes further to touch and move people. And and we can only discern that if people are, are being touched and moved, um, that they are increasing their faith. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so um, the icon is a, is a tool mm-hmm. for us. We like to think of it as a tool. Um, and um, as a matter of fact, I, I did a funny... Um, poster, if you will. Uh, it, it was sold already, but it has uh, the picture of um, all of the early saints, uh, some of them holding icons themselves. And then I have a saying that says, um, holy iconography. 
the original handheld device. Ah, but I'm bummed. Very it was, good. Is, I've had a lot of people want me to make more of that of that poster. Yes. Um, because it, it, it really makes them laugh, and it, it's actually factual. Back in the day when Jesus was walking the earth and people um, were following Jesus, a communication sometimes had to be made without the mouth, without the eyes, without pointing. And it was quite often that they had a little image of either the cross or the fish um, mm-hmm. or or um, the hero, which is seen today on the, on the back of the vestments of, of uh, priests. And that's the P and the X, but it's not a P. It's actually a, a Greek, uh, he and a ro, which stands for Christos. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of these were um, these symbols were made in miniature form and carried in their little medicine packs, their little money packs, their little backpacks, knapsacks, and quite often they were pulled out and just mm. shown, and then put back in quietly. Mm. And it was an un, it just an, not a conspicuous uh, movement or gesture or voice, and um, and they would also have them in their homes. And they were usually made small for um, the new believers, the new faithful. Um, but and, the, and the showing of the icon was purposeful in what way? Communicating that we're Christians. We are of the faith. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Better than a secret handshake. Better than a secret handshake. So there would also be maybe some risk. What if the receiver yes. they were showing that to... Was exactly. not a Christian. Yes. Well, see, that's the thing about the handshake. Mm-hmm. The handshake could be a bad handshake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could be a spy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Pontius Pilate's. You know, Secret Service. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were used, and that's that's why I think people are now beginning to see the difference. Now, I have a, a young man who is uh, interested in commissioning the three archangels that we're going to be discussing today um, in three different icons um and um and and i said well i've got these in printed form in the gallery that are affordable he said no i want the original traditional formula and um uh, with the gold and everything wow and 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 it's because he went to a byzantine catholic church Mm -hmm. in des moines and he said he stood in front of small icon prints um, like many of us have on the walls, like I was selling at at our fundraising dinner. Mm-hmm. But it was going to a, a, a liturgy, which is a mass, and to see the, how the icons were used in the liturgy and to see the size of them. And the reason why they were so large is because they were handwritten with the 2,000-year-old process. He said he stood in front of them, and it made him tingle all over it, he said it was so profound wow. that it was a such a huge difference that he came back and um now is in the process of, wow. of ordering his icons wow that is something well i know we are going to be talking about the archangels today and this is the time when i wish that radio had a little viewer finder because the icon that um magdalene brought is just beautiful And it's got the three archangels on it. And so I think that uh, she's going to be talking about um, Archangel Raphael first. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to start with with the Archangel Raphael or Raphael. Um, And I think what I want to do is start off with um, explaining why these three. And we're going to talk about St. Michael at the last part of of our show today. And also... um, um, Archangel Gabriel, why mm. these three tend to be shown together uh, and why they um, tend to be really the most known in terms of the archangels. Now, in my previous show, um, I have spoken about the different ranks of the angels. We have uh, nine different positions. There are three tiers, and the archangels are part of the last tier, not because they're weaker, but because they look the most recognizable to us. Now, we have the, 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 the seraphim, the, the cherubim, or the cherubim, we have the thrones. They're, they're, they're unique looking. 
They don't necessarily have legs, and they do have wings. Um, they have lots of wings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the next um, tier, we have um, we have some people call them the the virtues, the principalities, the dominions, and um, the um, well, the, actually, the princi- dominions, virtues, and powers. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, but the actual principalities uh, do come down into the third rank, mm-hmm. um, and because they're more uh, accessible for us when we're looking at them, we can recognize them as humans. So these archangels are probably uh, depicted most because they are cited in Scripture. Mm-hmm. We have some sort of proof for them. And, um, and then they are really integral to our faith. So when we start with Raphael, we find him um, in the Old Testament, and his name is Raphael. So that's a Jewish or a Hebrew word, mm-hmm. um, and because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew originally. And we're going to define it the best that we can because it's hard to break down these ancient um, names. But um, the meaning is it is God who has healed. So we're not saying that he's the healer. And certainly he's not saying that he's the healer. But he is named such that that any time we refer to him, we're actually referring to God who is doing the healing. What a selfless, wonderful name. It's so mm-hmm. appropriate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is the E-L ending on all the angels, archangels' names, does the E-L refer to God or no? It can. It, it, you know, E-L um, has then been, um, um, it, it's, it's been adopted into the Arabic as A-L, Al. And um, so, yes, we usually have that as, as our understanding, especially in the ancient form of Hebrew. So the, uh, I'm not going to say Raphael, and it's perfectly appropriate to say Raphael, because that's our Latin, our modern Latin pronunciation. Mm -hmm. But the Hebrew would say Raphael, Raphael. And so um, with with the the stress being in the middle of the word, Mm -hmm. which is kind of unique. Get our picture back here. All right. So the arc, uh, the syn- the synaxis of the archangels, of all the angels, occurs in the Eastern Catholic Church on November eighth. Now you just had the gathering for mm-hmm. the archangels mm-hmm. on at the end of September or beginning of October. Right. Let's see. I think it was the beginning of October. Right after the um, guardian angels. Holy guardian angels. Well, the guardian angels here, October second. Okay, so there. But Michael and but September twenty ninth, Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael on September twenty ninth. Okay, the so there is, it's very close. Mm-hmm. It's very very close, and um, so we end up seeing uh, uh, Raphael in the book of Tobit. Now, um, our Dewey Reams has that book. Hey, can we do Tobit on the other side of the break here? Oh, sure. Let's do that here. Okay. Good time to break. Good time to break. We're listening to. Master iconographer Madeline Graystein. The title keeps getting longer. Yes. We're going to find out about the book of Tobit and the Archangels when we return after these messages on KCRD. We're back in the studio, Colleen. We've got Magdalene Grace Dean with us. Yes, she's been educating us about the archangels and um, and other stuff. You're just full. You've got pages here of information you want to share with us, and this is great. I love learning about icons and the Byzantine um, and the history and all the stuff. So you were just ending the first segment, talking to us about Saint Raphael, which probably. Is how Dubuque say it, but you said it like the Hebrew pronunciation. So, um, and then you were telling us how he that archangel is found in the book of Tobit in the Old Testament. So, let's pick up on there on the story. All right. So um, we see him in mentioned in Tobit um, as he appears to Tobias, the son of Tobit. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, the 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 important thing here is that he he ends up being a guide. Uh, so we we see him here making um, making an appearance and and not really letting on that he's an archangel, not not letting on of his real name. He's he was um, assuming under a different name. Ends up uh, guiding the son of Tobit um, uh, to a faraway land to collect some money. Uh, there's a read read the story it's fantastic it's in the Dewey Rames uh, version and in a lot of the original King James um, uh, Bible versions and then also the Orthodox Bible which is what the Eastern Catholics use as Mm -hmm. well and um, so I I find it interesting that he's there as a guide and he's uh, He's watching over Tobias, and at the same time, Tobias is also uh, collecting his bride to be, and um, and there we have Raphael guiding him in that way as well, and also protecting him. Now, so I'm I'm, I'm speaking in terms of protection and guidance, and it's no wonder that our cathedral here in Dubuque is um, named after this particular archangel, as well as the archdiocese. So, um, you have an interesting fact about... Yes. Um, uh, venerable, is he Venerable? Samuel Mazzucchelli. Yeah. Or as all the Irish Catholics like to call him, Matthew Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> the Venerable Samuel yeah, Mazzucchelli. Yeah, Matthew Kelly. Um, is, um, Ma- Mazzucchelli built um, many churches, but in this area, he built three named after the archangels. And so, the cathedral here in Dubuque is St. Raphael's. And in Galena, we have St. Michael's. Mm-hmm. And in Prairie du Chien, we have St. Gabriel. Mm-hmm. So he knew the importance of the archangels and named those churches that. So that's the connection with um, with the cathedral and St. Raphael and Mazzucchelli. Well, I just think that's perfect. And, and I'm sorry to say that we just don't see enough prototypes or illustrations of the archangel Raphael. And if we do... Um, he's to me he's underrepresented mm-hmm. um, so in the icon that we have here we have him in uh, military armor and he is pointing and actually standing on a large fish and mm-hmm. we see in the book of Tobit that he actually was attacked by a large fish but he tackled the fish and caught it and he conquered the fish so this is why we have him standing on top of a fish and he's pointing. Is that in Tobit it. too? Yeah. 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 Um, and so then Gabriel then starts to, un, uh, under a, un, another assumed name, um, starts to uh, tell uh, Tobias, the son who just conquered this very large fish, to go ahead and, and fillet it. And in particular to save the uh, gallbladder, I believe, and the liver. Yeah. Um, and to put it in a little sack well, to, eat, to, to eat it, to save it to eat the fish and then save these these organs and that that looks uh, painful to you it, well it, i can imagine eating these things um in in fish form you yeah. know even as a child we were to have uh we were given cod liver oil and that was a horrible thing <laughs> i can imagine what this was like so um so tobias is also collecting his bride but there's a little problem his bride has well, let's just say a string of bad luck, and we're not going to chalk it down to luck. She's actually um, possessed mm-hmm. um, by some by the by the dark one, and had this horrible spell of whenever she married a man, he would die on their wedding night seven times. Mm-hmm. What a record! Mm. That just goes to tell you how relentless the dark one can be. Yeah. Um, so she, he was instructed by uh, by the archangel to feed her this little mash of of uh, organs from the fish, and sure enough, he did. And he married her. It broke the spell. Uh, it sent the dark one running, and um, um, Tobias lived. You know, uh, mm-hmm. if, if this if he didn't have uh, Raphael to watch over him, he would have ended up like the rest of the seven uh, husbands. So then he was also instructed to take some of that same organ mixture back uh, to his father. 
Now, um, unbeknownst to him, while um, he was away, his father somehow fell asleep outside underneath a tree, and some bird droppings got into his eyes and caused him to become blind. So once again, our friend here, Raphael, uh, instructs Tobias to go ahead and rub some of that fish um, uh, mixture onto the eyes, and sure enough, Tobit gets fully healed. So what we have here is uh, several symbols. First of all, the guide. He protected Tobias, and then we have healer. So when we see the icon, we see him with a fish, either holding caught fish or, in this case, standing on mm-hmm. a fish. Um, he's, he's still in armor because he's, he's known as a protector. And, and sure enough, he not only healed, but he protected the son, Tobias, from uh, a, a, a certain demise um, by marrying this, this, his bride. Well, I'm going to get our, our image. For, for the listeners, we're looking at a beautiful... Uh icon of the three archangels, Magdalene. Yes, um, I actually did this icon. This, you did this? Uh? Yeah, this is one of my icons. and um, From from a standard design, or did you? Yes, well, I had to add to it, but this is was done for a Ukrainian commission, and you can see it's written in Ukrainian, uh, the names of the archangels. Yeah. Uh, but it's rare to see them standing side by side like this. That was part of what was uh, needed so that it could become a very large icon and it lends itself perfect to go on a banner i find it i'm sorry no i was just going to say but every every one of the archangels you are relying on the traditional uh, representation of them yes i'm not allowed to just draw or design what i need to so i have to do a lot of research i find it curious they're all in battle garb they all have armor they all have a uh, sword in its sheath. What else do they have there, uh, Colleen? They have the high boots that look like they're ready to go, like army boots. Yep, yep. And some of them are wearing capes. Um, They're not holding the shields because they're busy holding holding other uh, symbols, which we're going to talk about. But what makes this one striking is that it's current for today. It it was commissioned to be current for today um, for the sense of protection. Michael, we know, is, is the supreme protector. But when you, when you line up the three top archangels mm-hmm. together, they're invincible. And, um, but and does, doesn't that have just, I was going to say subtle, but it's not subtle. It's, it's overt yes. that these guys are going to war. Yeah. yeah. You, get, you pick up on oh, that, Colleen? Yeah, for sure, going to war. Yeah. And, and they're here to serve the church and to protect the church. And Which suggests the church is under attack. Always. I think that's not. That's not par- commonly known or not, or com- the com- idea is com- not, not commonly there. talked about, Colleen. No, no it's not. It's not. I'm no. sorry, I interrupted, but I that, think it's that great. strikes yeah. me right now. No, you're right. We used to be called the church militant. Mm-hmm. That used to be our title for the church on earth, right? And the church, the souls that had passed on and were in purgatory, those were the church suffering. Right. And the souls that had made it to heaven, those were the that was the church triumphant. So we used to use those designations because we, we are in a battle and we really need all the supernatural help we can get. And that's why this particular prototype is very, very necessary for today. They're all in armor. Um, I think at this point, it's nice that we have the picture of our guardian angel. It's nice that we have the picture uh, or the icon of uh, St. Gabriel in the Annunciation blessing the Virgin as she accepts her mission. Um, But in in this particular icon, um, we really need to think about being vigilant because we too, as as members of the church, are the church militant. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, vigilance. Notice that none of them look like they're overfed. No. <laughs> so no. they're not. They're not participating in gluttony. They're not philosophizing, standing around talking. Um, uh, y- y- you know, which is what a lot of people are doing nowadays. Mm. They're actually out there, in military wear and in action. And I think one of the most striking things that we want to say about action and service to God and protecting 
the church is that those feet are never perfectly perpendicular, uh, parallel with each other. Iconography shows our angels in service. One foot is the launching point. The other foot is the going forward point. And in every one of these postures, mm-hmm. um, we, uh, every one of these uh, postures of the archangels, we're seeing that their feet are placed this way. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Gabriel. And Gabriel on this particular icon is to the far left. And here he's wearing full uh, military garb, and he's holding a very large orb or a shield. Yeah, but what's it's, that about? It, it's an orb. And in the other hand, he's holding a, a, a piece of bread. Um, or, or in the Eastern Catholic Church, um, uh, the host is actually cut from a loaf. Um, so he's holding the whole loaf. And um, so Gabriel is mentioned in, in the New Testament and a little in the Old Testament. He does make a couple of uh, uh, little cameos in the book of Daniel. Um, also, the ancient meaning, Hebrew meaning of his name, Gabriel, is man of God. Now, we would think that that would be Michael's name, but Michael's name is just a little bit different. The wording is slightly different. Mm-hmm. Um, but man of God can also be alternately translated as God is mighty. So rather than, I would have to say, um, uh, uh, standing for God in God's place, he's, he's letting people know about the mighty, um, uh, infinite power of God. And, and in that way, um, he is very protective, uh, both to Daniel and also um, was available to um, uh, speak a little bit with Moses to mm. help oh, really? inspire him to mm. write those commandments. Mm. Um, and then um, we also have uh, uh, an account where Joseph, and we're talking about the, the Old Testament Joseph, um, his, his inspiration to learn those 70 languages that were needed for him to rule in Egypt, um, that was also uh, attributed to Gabriel. Mm. So now we go down and in the New Testament, so in the, in, in the um, Eastern Catholic Church, you'll see the iconostasis before the altar, and you'll see the archangel Michael and Gabriel on either side of the altar, um, which is known as the deacon's door. It's where the deacon comes out, and it's also where the priest comes out to process. Um, and um, so we, we have what's known as the Old Testament door and the New Testament door. Hmm. So we have, uh, we have Michael placed at the Old Testament door because that's where we see him most. And for the New Testament door, we see Gabriel. And um, so Gabriel shows up in the book of Luke in the New Testament. And there he is attributed to um, giving the message so he is a messenger without question, uh, giving the message to uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth about the imminent birth of mm-hmm. John the Baptist. Um, then he's also well known for the Annunciation and giving the good news uh, to the Virgin Mary. But a lot of people don't realize that he was also available to um, uh let people uh, let people know, especially Anna and Joseph, um, that she was going to be guided and protected while she was going to the Holy of Holies when she was young. And this is the Virgin. So, and that's not Her in parents, Scripture. The, so, the is this the is the um, the, the tradi- apocrypha? Yeah, the apocrypha. Okay. Yeah, yes. And there's a lot of this that's not in Scripture mm-hmm. um, because the Church tradition, both in ancient Latin rite and then also in the Eastern Catholic Catholic rite, um, rely on the apocrypha for a lot of the the icons um, uh, composition. Um, and then finally, we know that Gabriel ap- uh, appeared to the myrrh-bearing women after um, after mm. Christ ha- was found. Uh, uh, em- the tomb was empty, mm, and there was an yep. angel and that's, there. Yep. That's that's Gabriel. That's Gabriel. Mm. Mm. So he's annou- he's doing a lot of announcing. He also shows up um, in the dream 
for Joseph, Mary's husband, the betrothed, Joseph the betrothed, um, to let him know that she is conceiving by God. So, mm. you know, so that he wouldn't, well, you know, do the manly thing that would mm-hmm. have been done, and that mm-hmm. is probably divorce her. Mm. Um, so we look at his symbolism, and we see that he is holding an orb, which is back in the Roman period, um, a mirror that was shiny was always uh, attributed and was used all throughout the region when Christ was uh, alive. Uh, up until the first 1,000 years, the shiny mirror, which was a glass with some metal or mercury applied to the back, uh, a symbol for clear purity of the Virgin, of Hmm. our Mother of God. So here we see a huge shining uh, uh, plate or mirror that he's holding. But he's also holding scripture, talking about the good news. And then on the other hand, he is holding um, the host, and then he is wearing a, uh, a sword that is scabbard. You know, it's, 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 it's in its um, um, sheath. No, it's in the it's sheath, and I believe that you can see the hilt is there mm-hmm. to make it very clear that he's still very much in a protective mode mm-hmm. um, with his military wear. And he is standing on top of a hilltop. So we had uh, Raphael standing on the fish because he conquered. But standing on the hilltop is where uh, where messages were were um, conveyed, either by oh, trumpet sure. or by voice, mm. um, so that it can be heard throughout the town. So uh, in some prototypes, we actually see him also with a trumpet. Okay. So, because he is letting people know that there is news. So he's a very powerful um, uh, messenger. And then uh, for the... We better uh, hit the pause button here. We're there. We're uh, (laughs) We're there. We're going to come... Out of segment number two, Colleen. We are. We're going to come back. Um, Segment number three, we're going to hear more about St. Michael the Archangel, saving the best for last in some ways. So you're listening to The Chatter on KCRD 98.3 FM, and our guest today is Master Iconographer Magdalene Grace Dean. We'll be right back after this. Back in the studios, what a what an interesting um, episode number one forty eight. Mm-hmm. You're right. We we probably should um, do this audio for the radio and and do some pictures for the uh, we website. Uh, do a uh, whatever yeah. blog that's called. Maybe on our podcast, can we put it up on our image for our podcast? I don't know. We'd have to ask Rob, the engineers. Question for you. We'll, yeah. we'll get back to that. Yeah. So, anyway, we were. Wait, we thought Raphael was good, and then we got to Gabriel. I was wondering here, probably Gabriel was the uh, guy that did the flight into Egypt annunciation uh, uh, announcement. Yes. Yeah, mm. he was, that's the good news. Yeah. 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 Oh, jo- yeah. Joseph, get up, go south. That's right, that one as well. Yeah. There's so, the, he, he really announced so much and, and guided so many. Um, it was interesting that you said he was the one that appeared to Joseph in the dream and said, don't be afraid to take Mary. Because I often wonder, why didn't the Blessed Mother just say to Joseph, look, here's what happened. But she doesn't, right? But maybe in the announcing, maybe Gabriel said, I got a, thi- I will I got offer- a theory on that. You oh, want to hear my theory on I this? I can't wait. Here's my theory. So the angel Gabriel comes... So they're betrothed, which means they're already married. Mm-hmm. It's a two-part deal, right, in, mm-hmm. in Jewish well, tradition. It, and it is in our old Latin mass tradition. Is it? Yes. There's actually the betrothal agreement. It's actually a certificate that's quite large and very They're ornate. just not living together. Yes. Well, in, it's... In Joseph and Mary. It's binding. Yeah, it's it, binding. It's so binding. they're already married. Yep. Gabriel comes to the virgin, who's taken, <clears throat> taken the vow of virginity, but she's praying for the coming of the Messiah. Gabriel shows up and says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And she says, how can this be? You know, I do not know man. And so he explains it. So that's rather well established, but I think everybody wants to get Joseph and throw him under the bus. Here's what I think happened. Mary goes to Joseph. They're married, not living together, and says, Joseph, guess what? The angel came and said, I'm going to be the mother of the Savior. And Joseph says, praise God, I'm not worthy. So Joseph says, the right thing to do is to quietly divorce Mary because this is of God and I'm not worthy. That's what I think happened. Mm -hmm. So he goes away and lets it be known to whomever, at least Luke knew about it, Mm -hmm. by way of the virgin. And Gabriel says the next night to Joseph, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. That's what I think happened. Could be. Could be. That's some good material for meditation. Well, it makes sense to me. That's apocryphal. <laughs> it's the most re- recent verse. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot better than any story I've heard where he said uh, Joseph is turning on Mary. I don't buy that. Well, in the in the nativity icon, we do have Joseph separated from uh, the Virgin. She's given birth. She's the the little uh, infant child is mm-hmm. in the cave. She's uh, reclining, but looking upon him. But at the same time, her head is turned, and she's also concerned about Joseph, who's outside of the cave at a distance, and mm-hmm. he's just he's just racking his brains over yeah. all of this. He's just so confused. I think, I think Joseph is the most humble guy yeah. that says, I can understand Mary, but this, I'm not worthy. He's doing the same thing the uh, centurion's doing. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Could be. That's where I think that's at. Well, knowing Joseph, it sounds very good because he was a good man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A good man. And a good man doesn't Mm -hmm. say, No. I'm going to divorce you. No. uh, For malice. He he would for justice. Yeah. But not for malice. Yeah, exactly. Well. The long-awaited. We'll have to add that. We'll have to petition that that gets added on to the tradition. Yes. I'm going there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the next we have is the Archangel Michael. Now, we all know Michael. Uh, His Hebrew ancient name means like unto God or who is like unto God. Mm -hmm. So in the name right right there, um, we see that, that he is upholding God. That that really is his his number one job as protector. Um, he's we almost never see him in uh, the regular governance uh, type vestment that looks like a deacon's uh, vestment. You mm-hmm. you do see him sometimes um, and in in prototypes, but we we almost exclusively see him in military garb. Because he's, he's really busy upholding. Well, those are fighting words, aren't they? Mm-hmm. they Who are. is like unto God? Yes, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. They yeah. are words of battle. All right, so we see him in the Old Testament um, um, under the book of Joshua, Daniel, uh, Second Kings, Second Maccabees, um, and then also Jude. And um, Jude. Yeah, there's a little Jude in here, and this is where the archangel Michael disputed with the devil over the body of the holy oh, prophet that's right. Moses. That's right, that's right. Yep, just a, just a quick little mention. And, uh, you know, with the kings, uh, second kings, he was in battle with Gabriel. They worked together to defeat uh, the Persians. Mm-hmm. So Doesn't so, that speak nicely to the um, sanctity of bodies, of of our forefathers. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to putting them in the carrot garden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> did I, did I say there. that easy? You went there. We're did I say that visual, easy We're getting a visual here. of this. And we're, uh, yeah. Okay, so in this prototype, we see that he is standing on man. Now, the Eastern Catholics during, uh, during uh, the Pascha, uh, during 
Easter, um, we have a hymn that we sing uh, where Christ is trampling down death upon death. Um, here we have Michael trampling um, uh, what's known as uh, death of man, uh, because you know, with with upholding as the church militant and protecting the faithful and the church, um, he is he is saying here what's what's stamped out or what's being stomped out is uh, you know. Uh, eternal condemnation um, with the Savior of Christ, you no longer have to be bound in Hades. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now he, in one hand, he is holding the scales. Now, he's also known as the Diacritis, which is what we see in the most ancient um, uh, Archangel Michael icons, and that is the Great Judge. So we see that he judges uh, especially we see this in the book of Revelation. So we see him in the New Testament as well. And he's also mentioned um, in Thessalonians towards the end um, where he, he does some healing work as well. But the other hand, of course, he has his, his uh, sword and it is sheathed. It's in the scabbard. Uh, because the other hand is busy, you have one hand holding the scales, but the other hand is busy holding uh, a tiny little, looks like a little man. Mm -hmm. Well, in iconography, we don't, babies never look like cute, chubby babies that you want to, you know, pinch their cheek. Mm -hmm. um, when we see even the infant Jesus, he looks like a little man. And what's being held in the hand of Michael here, in the left hand here, is um, the, a little man or a, a baby. Um, and that stands for the soul. He is upholding the soul. Really? Hmm. Yes. The soul of? The soul of man. Of mankind? Of, of all mankind. Man? Yes. With, with salvation, uh, the little soul of this baby here is being held, hmm. upheld. Wow. All right. So um, let's talk about colors. Michael is usually in shades of red, uh, the passion for Christ, uh, the, the color of his cloak. When we see Gabriel, we see that sometimes he has a little bit of green attached to him, but mostly in light blue or lighter um, uh, red. And, and he's really symbolizing the colors of the divine, the colors of heaven. And then in Raphael, we end up seeing uh, deeper, darker colors, blues and reds both, uh, because of his role as guide, but then also as healer. We do see him in green sometimes as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and Can I ask before, we're, mm -hmm. I know we're going there, but each of the archangels inside their halo have um, on this picture some white. I love that what, you're noticing what, what that. What is that? I love that you're looking that closely at this icon, which means this icon is, is asking you to look deeper and deeper because that, that it's so fine that most people would not notice it unless... They sat before the icon for some length of time. Around the halo, which is the um, infinite uh, power of God that's mm -hmm. depicted, you have the alpha and the omega in the round shape, the beginning and the end. I am the alpha and the omega, the eternity symbol for the circle. So the red outline is going to be for the passion of Christ, and then the white is for the purity. And in this case, the purity of the mother of God. So coming behind their neck then, that's Alpha and Omega, is that? Yes. Uh, yes. For, for each of them, they yes. have that. Yes. Now, if we really wanted to break it down further, I did yeah. a lecture this week where we're talking about why is there not a halo around the hands or the feet or the heart? Um, the prototypes in iconography do not have the uh, uh, the, sa the blessed sa the, the 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 heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary depicted in the canon, um, because it is the head that is governed, and what is illuminated is the noose. The noose is the eye of the soul, and the uh, theologically speaking, it sits right at the forehead and emanates throughout the whole crown of mm -hmm. the head. So this is why you see a halo on the head and not on the heart or other body parts. Because it is through, God enters through 
our understanding through the noose and then enters the heart. That's the pathway. Mm-hmm. And, and then from there, it enters hands and feet for action. Um, there, there is no grace coming from God that doesn't proceed into action. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is the symbolism in iconography. So do we have time to get in this other beautiful St. Well, Michael? I'll, I'll talk about it very quickly. And this is a very, very important icon. I've never seen this before. This is called the Voyavoda or the uh, Michael of the Apocalypse. The Voyavoda is the, um, is the Slavic, old Slavonic term for warlord. And indeed, he is, people think it's Christ, mm-hmm. um, but it is Michael in a completely different outfit. I mean, he does wear armor, and he does have the red cloak, but he's on a red horse, mm-hmm. and the red horse has wings. And he is holding a spear where he is uh, he destroying the devil. Mm-hmm. He's holding a cross in that same hand. In the other hand, he's holding the trumpet and a censer and the gospel. Now, this is all described in minute detail in the book of Revelations and what we know today as the, s- the story of, uh, of eschatology. Right. And, and so this icon is absolutely necessary in the home at this present time. So many people are saying, oh, you know, the apocalypse, the rapture is coming, all of this is coming. And I just quietly tell people the four horsemen are already here yeah and a lot of people don't want to hear it and they don't want to know it but this i just turn the news on it's mm-hmm. it's 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 in black and white it's in our face we just need to open our eyes to it once again say uh, our saint archangel Raphael uh, was known for healing the eyesight of Tobit. I think we need to pray about our, uh, to, to hi- uh, through him, uh, regarding the governance of our church here at the Archdiocese, the cathedral, but also to our own awakening and paying attention to what is going on now, especially before the election. We are finding unprecedented occurrences, both in weather, um, in in our finances, in our media, in our politics, and Mm -hmm. in our own faith Mm -hmm. that are are unimaginable, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. that many of us are just turning away and don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Many of us are familiar with the St. Michael prayer from Pope. Leo the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Do, do Raphael and Gabriel have something similar? Do well, we? well, they don't in in terms of the actual prayers. But I do highly suggest having icons of these archangels because the icon is a prayer, and it's a prayer. Say that again. Say that again. The icon is a prayer for the eyes and for the soul. We don't process it like text on paper, like a prayer. But we do read the icon as though we're reading the prayer, and we open up our hearts as though we're praying from a prayer book. So the, I, I highly recommend, and I know you had already requested this particular prototype for yes. its power. You're delivering tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight? <laughs> I'll have it waiting for you, and we'll, we'll figure out a time. So at the bottom of this icon, we not only see the devil, and he's got fire coming out of all his parts, but then there's some fire elsewhere, and then it looks like the sea is rolling, and there's buildings falling in it. So yeah. it looks this that is, looks like the world is. This is described in the Book of Revelations. But is it not going on now? Do we have flooding, both coming from rain and coming from hurricanes and coming from rising waters? Do we not have fires that are brought on by these hurricanes and these rains? Mm-hmm. Um, we're seeing this icon being acted out Mm -hmm. in technicolor in our world today Mm -hmm. and there is only one one outcome with god and that is conquering evil and that's what this icon helps us to believe when everything around us proceeds to get more difficult and more scary Mm -hmm. magdalene we got about 60 seconds left in the upper left-hand corner of this icon is a curious figure. Well, we have Christ, and we have the uh, we have the Eucharist, the Gospel, 
and the chalice. Mm. And it is God that is sending Michael to take care of the world. Mm. But we must continue to pray with St. Michael so that he conquers. Mm -hmm. So that's a very New Testament type of icon here. Not only St. Michael out of Revelation, the apocalypse, but to have Christ there with the... uh, with the scriptures and the the Eucharist, the Eucharist Colleen. Yeah. Is yeah. that right. fascinating? Yeah. That, that means don't stay home on Sundays. Get to yeah. church, get, get fed through scripture mm-hmm. and through the body of Christ so that you can be a warrior like St. Michael. So if uh, these icons are just beautiful, so if any of our listeners would like to come to the studio and yeah. see what you have and what they might want to purchase for their home, what, um, how can they do that? They can come to the gallery at 333 Bluff Street. It's the Catholicon Art Studio, and we are in the same shop as Byzantium, where we have teas that are wellness-minded, and they're saintly. Most of them are named after saints or scripture. And what are your hours? Wednesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're flat out of time. We thought we could get three archangels in, and we just did. Yeah, great information. Episode 148 comes to a close. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, Father, and to the the Son, Son, and to the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and ever ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tune in again next week. We love you.